Yeah, that is the million dollar question, isn't it? And I think, you know, we get a lot of retailers talk to us about what what are their competitors doing? And I always say, it doesn't matter what they're right, doing, because right. if you copy them, you're not going to be number one by copying what someone else does. You know, let's look at your business dynamics, your operating model, and let's try and figure out what the right answer is for you. Um, and actually, it, it does vary quite a lot. You know, retailers do have different pressures all, you know, all over the place. Um, you know, a good example in Europe would be, you know, Picnic uh, is a mm -hmm. Dutch retailer, online retailer, relatively new player in the market. You know, they have a, a national distribution network for grocery online that they'll use a hub and a spoke. And then the spokes will be converted petrol stations and they'll do the last mile delivery on kind of small milk floats. Is that mm -hmm. do you have a milk float? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, get the so idea, small yeah. electric small electric milk float to do, yeah. do the last mile. Now, now that is a really innovative solution. Um, and, and then you have other retailers like Tesco's in the UK that are really focused on creating small automated facilities that are co-located with some of their larger stores. And they're really focusing on a, on a different approach, which is how can, they, how can they get the maximum property efficiency? So the business case is really different. What is consistent is that the, the retailers are looking for between a two and a two and a half year payback Chris so mm -hmm. so with that in mind if you work up the economics of it you can figure out how much they've got to invest and that is certainly a good starting point let's work with the payback let's figure out the size of the investment and then work out what technology is available and if that meets the goals